Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us, for your creating this universe and coming down because, we're, as the song says, we're so unworthy, but yet you still love us. Thank you for loving us, Lord. The only thing you see in us is your Son, and we praise you that he came down and died for each one of us. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the, the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for giving us abundantly, as your word says, and we pray right now that we share it back with you. Bless these tithes and offerings to your church, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you thankful for our holy, loving God this morning? Are you thankful for a God who left heaven, became a man, and died for your sins, and um, paid for the price for those sins, and rose from the grave on the third day? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't give you something to say there, did I? Amen. Me too. And he's coming back. He could come back today. Let's, ta let's have a little business meeting. If you believe Jesus could come back today, raise your hand. All right, good. All right. Why aren't you living like that? I mean, if I thought he was coming back today, I'd have my bags packed and everything ready to roll. Um, he could come back today. He could come back later. We don't know when he's going to come back. And, and um, because of that, we make major, major, because of the sacrifice he made for us, we make major sacrifices to take the gospel all over the planet. And one place we take the gospel is into the prisons. In just a minute, you're going to hear a fantastic testimony about one of our members, and we have several that, that are involved in prison ministry. But you're going to hear an awesome testimony from Ashton Brock, who is not only involved in prison ministry, he's giving his life to it. And uh, I'm excited about what God's doing in Ashton's life, in our church, and in his ministry. In just a minute, we're going to, we're going to let him give a, a, a really a thorough description and detailed testimony of what he's doing. But before we do that, I want to read our text. Turn to Mark chapter 13. And if you're keeping notes or been keeping track, yes, we did Mark 14 last week. We're back to Mark 13. So we went from we're going from about two days before the crucifixion down to maybe three or four days before the crucifixion. And um, you know what? Time is running out. Time is running out. Do you believe that? Time is running out. Christ is going to return. Your opportunity to do whatever it is that you want to do is coming and it's passing. We have no idea exactly how fast, but my, my admonition to you this morning, do whatever you need to do while there's still time to do it. Ashton's taking the gospel into the prisons, into the jails. He's a, a chaplain. He, and, and we have others uh, Rita takes it into the prisons. Bubba takes it into the, We have several others. We support John Corcoran who does that. But we want to take, uh, and, and just, I think it's cool. We're singing, my chains are gone. You see, when Christ comes into your life, those chains of sin and that prison that we're all born into of sin, it, 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 it falls off. And what we read today is just a reminder that, um, man, we're in like the last of the fourth Quarter. Did anybody watch college football yesterday? I think this was on my mind because I knew I was going to preach this today. But I mean, so many of those games went down to the last bit of the last game. It was very exciting. Georgia was down by 20 points, came back and took a one-point lead, and then still managed to lose the game in the last seconds. But you'll notice in any sport, whatever sport you're into, when, when it gets to the last few minutes, man, every possession is precious. The, 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 the urgency is different, Right? Well, we're, what do they call it, the hurry-up offense, isn't that, in football? We're in a hurry-up offense, folks. And this passage tells us that, that, that time, the time 
is near. You know, we just, Pastor Derek and I and some others went, uh, had the chance to go to uh, the SBCV meetings down in Roanoke. And I thank God for the Southern Baptist Conservatives of Virginia. They had their annual, we, had, we had our annual meeting in Roanoke this past week. And again, being there, and I'll be honest with you, some, some of the time I was there, I was actually reading Mark 13, getting ready for today. But I, I you know, I honestly develop a sense, and, and I think we need to develop a sense of urgency about the, the imminent return of Christ and the fact that we don't have unlimited time. Not only do we not have unlimited money, although I don't know what that would look like. Thank you, those of you that just put your hard-earned money into the offering plate, your tithes, your offerings. Uh, man, thank you for the way you sacrifice. Thank you for the, the, the way you give. But um, I don't know what it would be like to have a $5 million budget or a $10 million budget. What would we do? You know? but, but we don't have unlimited resources. We don't have unlimited manpower, and we certainly don't have un unlimited time, do we? Okay, so let's read Mark 13. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I read most of it. Pastor Derek's preaching next week, and he's agreed to, to finish the chapter, so be here next week. He's also going to talk about his passion for the Great Exchange Church. We are his sending church. We want you to be involved mentally, financially, uh, spiritually, and, and, and we are sending him there and, and his team to do something wonderful. So be back next week. We'll, we'll read the rest of this. I guess whatever I forget to cover, Pastor Derek will catch up next week. Are you there in Mark 13? Verse 1, as he came to the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones, what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished. And Jesus began to say to them, see that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. Verse seven. And when you hear of wars and rumor of wars, do not be alarmed, this must first take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginnings of birth pangs. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues, and you will stand there before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. And when they bring you to trial and to deliver you over, do not be anxious for beforehand what you will are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother to death, and the father his child, and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated for my name's sake, but one who endures to the end will be saved. But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down or enter 